I want to welcome everybody to His Glory Ministry as we continue our series in the book of Genesis. Tonight we'll be in Genesis 44, and as we always do, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come down from east to west to north to south to be the true teacher in the living word of God, which is our Savior, Christ the Lord. Okay, Genesis 44, 1, and he commanded the steward of his house, saying, fill the man's sack with food as much as they can carry, and put each man's money in the mouth of his sack. So Joseph is given instruction as the uh, his brothers are heading back to uh, their father Israel, and um, he's going to set them up for uh, the test of all tests now. Also put my cup, the silver cup, in the mouth of the sack of the youngest, and his grain money. So he did according to the word that Joseph had spoken. So he took Joseph's personal cup that we'll see later that uh, his servant will say that Joseph used for uh, enchanting, divination, um, using the occult. Um, so this was not from Jehovah God. This was not from Elohim. Uh, but it was Joseph's cup, his silver cup. And silver is always a uh, constant idiom throughout the Bible of blood, blood redemption. So silver, again, 30 pieces of silver for the death of Christ. Here is the silver cup. And remember, uh, they're in, this, in the same bloodline. Benjamin is the true blood of Joseph, the only of the brothers that's pure um, from both mother and father. So this is why he's testing it with uh, Israel's youngest son again, Benjamin. Because ben, remember, Benjamin and Joseph were the sons of Rachel, and they were the beloved, uh, the most beloved of of, of Israel. And um, so he's going to uh, test the brothers again by taking um, Jacob or Israel's youngest brother Benjamin, and that's what the silver cup uh, means, blood redemption. So Joseph is somewhat of a typeset of a kinsman redeemer. He's redeeming his tribe back to. Uh, back back into Egypt to start the nation of Israel. So again, it's coming from the bloodline, exactly the way our Messiah, who took the 30 pieces of silver and the blood, uh, died on the cross uh, for our sins, past, present, and future with his blood so that we could be redeemed with him for eternity. And he had to be of the bloodline of the tribe of Judah. He had to be of the bloodline of his father David in the flesh. And that is our King of Kings and Lord of Hosts, our High Priest, our God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise his name. Um, so then he did according to the word that Joseph had spoken. As soon as the morning dawned, the men were sent away, they and their donkeys. Again, they didn't check to think about it. They just figured, okay, he's uh, given us a pass this time. Um, Everything seems to be good. Let's not even check and see if there's any mistakes in our packing. They packed it for us. Uh, let's go. And when they had gone out of the city and were not far yet far off, Joseph said to his steward, Get up and follow the men, and when you overtake them, say to them, Why have you repaid evil for good? So he's going to test them, see what their heart is about. Are they going to go back to the deceitful ways? Are they going to go back to their sin? Are they going to go back? And we're going to see later on, uh, Judah is going to use the word iniquity. Iniquity is the highest form of sin. That means you know God knows it's wrong. And you don't care. You're going to do it anyway for your own personal pleasure. And it was iniquity in their hearts that they sold their brother off into slavery. So this is why he's testing them to see, are they going to repent from the iniquity of casting their brother off Joseph into slavery? And uh, so here, here comes the test. Uh, verse 5, is not this the one from which my Lord drinks and with which one he indeed practiced divination? You have done evil in so doing. Um, so again, he, they're, they're going upon them. So he overtook them and he spoke to them th to say these words. And they said to him, why does my Lord say these words? Far be it from us that your servants should do such a thing. So he, his servant of Joseph is claiming that you took, uh, that they took the king or the, uh, Joseph's uh, divination or uh, enchanting cup, what he uses for uh, the occult, the sorcery. Um, which there's no signs that Joseph ever did that. Joseph's God has always been Elohim. We know he's in Elohim, but he's in a, he is in a country that is dominated by false gods. But Joseph is being true to the one and true only God. He's using this as a test. And um, so they said, look, we brought back to you from the land of Canaan the money which we found in the mouth of our sacks. How then could we steal silver or gold from your Lord's house? Again, the word Lord that's being used throughout here is uh, Adon 
in the Hebrew, and that means um, it's not deity, so it's not in the same as when we see the word Lord uh, referring to Jehovah. It's uh, when it used Lord referring to God, it's using, uh, is in, in Hebrew is Jehovah. Uh, uh, Jehovah, Jehovah, in Hebrew is actually pronounced Jehovah, and that's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Here is just a, a term of somebody that has uh, responsibility over you, uh, not deity. They may be your owner, they may be a, a master of a, a particular um, uh, house or what have you, exactly the way uh, Joseph is. And he, he says, Whenever, wh whoever was servant is found, let him die, and also will be my Lord's slaves. So uh, then he said, so they're saying, how could, you know, we gave her, you, 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 you tricked us the first time, and we came back and brought the money back. Um, so why would we steal your silver and gold? Didn't we prove that we are in, our integrity was there? So why would we, uh, you know, why would we do that? And, and, and he says, uh, so they speak up and says, whoever your servants is found with this, let him die. And we also will be my Lord's slaves. So he, they were so sure of themselves that they did right that they, uh, they, 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 they created an oath to the servant saying, hey, whoever it is, let them die. And we see through the scripture so many times where somebody has taken an oath in the name of the Lord and it comes back to haunt them. That's why Jesus says in the Gospels, may your yes be yes and your no be no. God doesn't need you to take an oath in his name because he is God. He doesn't need to you take an oath to do something of the flesh for him because he's God. He wants you to be cheerfully walking hand in hand with him, but may your yes be yes and your no be no. We're servants. We follow orders. We follow orders from the Most High God. We don't make big promises because the Lord expects when we make these promises, high expect promises, either uh, that we, 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 we keep them. And we're going to find out that this promise here that they exaggerated on saying, take him and we'll be our slaves and let that person, uh, let him die, meaning Benjamin to die when they're going to find out it's, can you imagine their hearts when they find out it's Benjamin after giving that oath? And that's why, again, what Christ says, may your yes be yes and your no be no. Verse 10, and he said, now also let it be according to your words. He whom is found shall be my slave and you shall be blameless. Then each man speedily let, uh, let down his sack to the ground, and each opened his sack. So now they're opening up to show um, their proof of innocence or their proof of guilt. So he searched, and he began with the oldest and left off with the youngest, and the cup was found in Benjamin's sack, and there it was. There was the silver cup. Again, the silver is blood, uh, redemption, uh, blood being the youngest, the blood of Joseph, and a type of uh, the blood redeemer, the Goel, the kinsman redeemer, the ultimate kinsman redeemer from the line of Boaz through David, through our Messiah, Jesus Christ. Then they tore their clothes and each man loaded his donkey and returned to the city. Um, so they tore their clothes. Remember, we've talked many times that you tear your clothes and you put yourself in ash, ashes over your head because you're just in absolute Un, uh, just in and just in, in remorse that this happened you, you're just oh how could this happen and it's it's a way of of of, of showing repentance and sorrow and just um, humbling oneself and so they what they each did is they immediately all together returned back to Joseph they didn't leave Benjamin and say well there's one last one behind us let's go tell dad that uh, we lost his other young one too. No, they, uh, they, they took ownership and they went back to Joseph to plead their case. So Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house and he was still there and they fell before him on the ground and they humbled themselves before him again. The third time now that they fell before him on the ground. And Joseph said to them, what deed is it that you have done? Did you not know that such a man as I can certainly practice divination? And then Judah said, what shall we say to my Lord? What shall we speak or how shall we clear ourselves? God has found out the iniquity. So the God here is Elohim. So he's saying, I don't care about your, 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 your gods and your, your, your enchanting cup. It's our God that matters. And he's found us, found out the iniquity of your servants. God has recognized and we recognize that we had iniquity in our hearts and we're asking for repentance because we sold our brother into slavery. We knew God, Elohim, did not want us to do that and we had a harden of the heart of jealousy and pride because he was being treated differently and because of that jealousy and that pride and greed for money, we sold off our half-brother 
uh, for, for, for financial gain, to get him out of the household. And we knew God didn't want us to do that, and we did it anyway. That is the worst form of sin. It's called iniquity, hardening of the heart. But to repenting, there's always repentance when this happened. G or David did the same thing in the Psalms when he sinned with Bathsheba and sent Uriah up to be killed in the front line. He said, my Lord, my Lord, meaning Jehovah, Jehovah, I have iniquity in my heart. I have iniquity towards you, Elohim meaning he acknowledged that iniquity was in his heart with Bathsheba, not a normal sin, stating that David knew that God knew that it was wrong, and he did it for his own fleshly purpose, his own, um, his own personal gain, and he didn't obey the, the Elohim in, in, in the full, and he used the word iniquity, and that in Hebrew is aban. Avon is the term for iniquity. It's far greater than sin. But he said, far be it from me should I do so. The man in whose hand the cup was found, he shall be my slave. And as for you, go in peace to your father. So he's saying, you know what? That, it is what it is. Uh, I won't kill the, the lad, but he's going to come with me and you guys go back to your father. So then Judah, who created an oath to Israel before they left, remember, he said, let the blood be on me instead of Benjamin. I will take full responsibility of Benjamin I will take care of it. And Judah stood up in this time of crisis, this time of tribulation. Stood up, kept his word, and kept in belief of Jehovah God, Elohim. And then Judah came near and said, O oh my Lord, please let your servant speak a word in my Lord's hearing, and do not let your anger burn against your servant, for you are even like Pharaoh. So he's, you know, let, me, let me plead my case and humble myself before you to, to speak because of your power. Now, my Lord asked his servant, saying, Have you. Uh, so he, then Judah came near and said, Oh, my Lord, please let your servant speak. You are like Pharaoh. And then my Lord asked his servant, saying, Have you a father or a brother? So he's referring back to the time, Do you have a father or a brother? When Joseph asked him those questions. And he said, When we said to the Lord, We have a father, an old man, and a child of his, uh, of his old age who is young. And that's Benjamin. His brother is dead, referring to Joseph. And he alone is left of his mother's children, and his father loves him dearly. It doesn't say dearly, but it says his father loves him. So Benjamin was his, you know, his, his, uh, his love, his youngest, his attention to him. Then you said to your servant, bring him down to me, that I may set my eyes on him. So you, they're saying, hey, we honored what you want us to do. Bring the young one back so I can see him. And we said to, to my Lord, that lad cannot leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. His father would die with a broken heart of grief of losing his two, uh, his two youngest, which were of his love, Rachel, uh, the only two conceived of Rachel. Uh, but you said to your servants, unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you shall see my face no more. So he's referring to, it's, it's Benjamin or nothing. So it was when we went up to your servant, my father, that we told him the words of, of my Lord. And our father said, go back and buy us a little food. But we said, we cannot go down. If your youngest brother is with, is with us, then, we'll go, then we will go down. For we may not see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. So he's repeating what he, he told Israel, that the only way that we're going to get food again and, and, and get our brother uh, Simeon out of uh, house arrest in Egypt is to bring the young lad Benjamin. That is what the second in command of Pharaoh is requesting. Then your servant, my father, said to us, you know that my wife bore me two sons. So again, showing the favor to, favor, favor hood to Joseph and um, Benjamin. And the one went out from me, and I said, surely he is torn to pieces, and I have not seen him since. Again, torn to pieces, meaning Joseph, where his brothers tricked him, thinking that a wild beast killed him. They took the the blood of an animal, put it on the, his, 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 uh, his coat, um, this coat that was special uh, for Joseph, and ripped it up to, to, to um, you know, wash their hands of, of selling him off into slavery and, and doing something horrific and getting their father to think that uh, Joseph was dead. And again, that was iniquity. They're realizing the iniquity they created. That See how God has told us why his precepts and commandments are so important? Look, greed and, and uh, greed and money and power and iniquity and jealousy. Look how many innocent people were hurt in this story because they were jealous of their brother. They were prideful of their brother and they hurt their father to make him think that he lost his son. I mean, that is just it's the most horrible thing you can do to a, a, a father. Um, it's just un unthinkable. 
But if you take this one also from me and the calamity befalls, uh, befalls him, you shall bring down my gray hair with sorrow to the grave. So repeating what Israel told them. Now therefore, when I come to my, ser my servant, my father, and the lad is not with us, since his life is bound in the lad's life, it will happen when he sees that the lad is not with us that he will die. So your servants will bring down the gray hair of your servant, our father, with a sorrow to his grave. So he's saying, if I don't come back with Benjamin, my father is literally going to die of a broken heart because I claimed and I would took responsibility and this would be too much for him to lose too. So Judah is stepping up and taking ownership and, ho and, and putting his trust in Jehovah, Elohim. For your servant became surety for the lad to, to my father, saying, If I do not bring him back to you, then I shall bear the blame before my father forever. Judah is saying, I'm taking responsibility. And that's what we need to do with our life too. Take responsibility for our actions. If we have sinned or we have iniquity in our heart, the first thing we need to do is get down on our knees and pray and ask for repentance of our sins. And if we've wronged somebody, humble ourselves and go to them and say, I'm sorry, I've, I, I've wronged you. Make that right. Live in a world that we are the radiation of Christ. We are that light. We are that beacon. We walk upright. We walk with joy, peace, love in us because of the light, which is Christ the Lord, radiates all around us. And the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5 Verse 22 is, 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 is budding everywhere around us. We need to be that light in this darkness in this day and age. We need to learn from these patriarchs and the, and the Bible. These are not stories. These are real people. Went through real events. Went through real trials and tribulations. And God is showing this for our, for our benefit so that we don't repeat it. And we know that the Lord will see us through all things, meaning the Lord as in Jehovah and three, Elohim, God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. We put our trust in him and let him be our deliverer. Let him walk the walk. Let him be our will. And we walk hand in hand with him and not make oaths to him that we can't fulfill because there's nothing of the flesh we can do to impress God. God wants our heart and he wants our obedience. So now, therefore, please let your servant remain instead of the lad as a slave to my Lord and let the lad go up with his brother. So he's saying, hey, I'm taking this place. I'm, I, I got to pay for this. I, it was my word, and my word is bond. And that's why God is. He puts, his, he puts his word above his name. He puts his word above his name. What awesomeness is that, that we have the God of the universe, that we can trust every word from him is holy and true. He cannot lie. He cannot sin. He cannot learn because he's all-knowing. And the one and, and, and the most beautiful thing that brings me to tears is he cannot make you love him. He's given us free will. He's the God of the universe. And he loves us so much that he gave us free will to choose him on our own terms. There's a consequence if we don't, but he's not forcing it down our throat. That is what true agape love is not being forced into it, but doing it because of true, true love, unconditional love. And that's what he wants from each and every one of us. And if you do have that agape love with the Lord, you will be obedient to him and for him because you, it will break your heart when you hurt him, knowing that his obedience are for our benefit. And we want to be obedient to the Lord. And we close up in verse 34. For how shall I go to my father if the lad is not with me? lest perhaps I see the evil that would come upon my father. And he says, I can't do it. It would break my heart. I'm going to stay to my word. It will break my father's heart. And that would be Israel. We pray that Genesis 44 has been an absolute blessing to you. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you. Until next time in Genesis 45. God bless you.